Hi there, Linda Goodall here. I saw this question recently in a hatch group, so I thought I'd make a quick video. And the question was, I can't ungroup a design. I'm trying to extract a section. This isn't the design she had, but it's very similar. She had a large design that was one color and kind of had swirly bits in it. And here's a large design with swirly bits in it. If we look down here on the status bar, we can see that it's a large design. It's almost 195 millimeters wide, 220 millimeters tall. It has over 30,000 stitches. It's also a grade D. And what grade D tells us is that Hatch has opened this as stitches only. So when I'm working with PES files, and this was a PES file, or other machine files, I like to open them as stitches only so that things don't happen to them unless I want them to. So if we go over to the Objects tab, we don't really have objects in machine files or stitch files. We have blobs of stitches. And because this is a single color and all the pieces are connected, we have one blob of stitches. We can't ungroup this because ungrouping just does not apply here. So if you want to edit it, let's say that we want to select this little swirly bit up here and extract that as a separate design. Well, if you try to edit this, you could do it, but it's some major stitch surgery. But Hatch has some tools that make this easier. So let's see what they are. I'm going to select this, and I'm going to go to the Edit menu, and I'm going to say Recognize Stitches. And what Hatch does here is it looks at the design and it tries to convert everything into Hatch type objects. And you can see over here that we've got a running stitch, but we still have some stitchy bits here. And here we have a column stitch, what kind of stitch you'd make with the block tool. What it's done here is Hatch looks at the design and it says, oh, I see satin stitches here, so I'll make that a column. I see, you know, running stitches or some unidentifiable stitches. So these are going to be underlay, travel stitches, that sort of thing. So it's still a little clumsy right now. So what we can do is, here's one that I've already cleaned up. Here I've cleaned out all those parts that were not objects or that appeared to be underlay or travel stitches. And then I selected them all and I pressed J on the keyboard to reconnect closest join. I haven't done any extra work on this. You'd want to go through and apply underlay selectively and maybe turn on auto split because I know these satins are relatively long. There was a, a split here in the original design. So now that I have this, what I can do is I can select the polygon tool up here. Normally we have this select tool, but I'm going to select the polygon tool and I'm going to make a selection around like this. And I'm going to change that all to red. And I did get some pieces here that I don't want. So I'm going to go back to the select tool, select that one, hold down the control key, select that one, change that back, change this to red. Now if I go to the colors tab, you can see I have another one that I didn't want. Now I have all of my pieces that I want in one selection. I'll copy, new, control N, control V, and I'll probably want to center this, zero, zero. There's my new design. Now I might need to do some extra work on it because you can see some little funky things going on if we zoom in here. But that's a, a matter of how the shapes got re recreated. But since they're objects, if so I, I zoom in like this, see, I ha and I press S on the keyboard, I have objects. And they're not as clean as the original objects in the program where I originally created this design back in, I don't know, 2008. But you can clean them up if you need to. So that was much faster than editing stitches and having to reconnect them because I can tell you if you had gone to this version and tried to extract that piece, it would have been hard and it might not have been optimized. You might have had jumps and trims in there. And by doing what we just did, we can clean up all those jumps and trims. So I know that was a really short and quick demo. Hatch has really powerful and easy to use tools for editing even stitch files like this. You just have to learn which ones to use and the best way to do it 
and that is through the Hatch Academy. We're continually adding new content monthly, and the Getting Started series is free. So hop on over there and give it a try. If you like videos like this, please like, subscribe, and make a comment, because that's what tells YouTube that I'm doing something good here, and that's what lets me know what kind of videos to produce. See you next time.